Okay, uh, <clears throat> part three of Volumes of Revolution. Uh, you know, and people call it different things, solids of revolution, volumes of revolution, volumes of solids of revolution. It, it's all the same thing. I think I called the, I think I titled the last one uh, Volume of Revolution, but you get the idea. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in uh, this time with uh, what I've gone ahead and printed out here. Uh, <clears throat> I have made... Uh, actually, let's let's see if we can zoom out a little bit so we can actually see the whole thing. Aha! I love this camera. Um, and we see the fact that, you know, in the first quadrant, these actually wind up making very different graphs, right? Uh, this one right here is the quadratic, okay? And, of course, that, that should have been really, really easy to discern. Uh, this is the y is equal to x minus 1 squared, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and designate the cube root function. Now, we didn't do a whole lot with cube root functions, but you should recognize this as the inverse of the cubic function, uh, just transformed, right? And this is 2 times the cube root of x plus 1. And then the last one is this linear function right here. Okay, And that, of course, should have been the easiest one to identify. Uh, it's that one right here. And it's y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. Okay, Now, this creates several different regions. Uh, what I want to do first is, uh, and we can we can do a thousand different things with this, and I just want to play with it. I haven't really, really figured out uh, exactly what I want to do. Uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and um, let's, let's revolve the area underneath the cube root function uh, on the interval 0 to 1, okay? Now, I need to ask myself, is this region flush with the axis of revolution. If I want to spin it around, uh, x is equal, I mean, y is equal to zero, the x axis, it is flush, meaning that on the entire interval, the region that we want to spin around that axis actually bumps up next to the axis of revolution. So that means that when I want to start spinning it around and I want to start thinking about those cross sections, uh, within that region, okay, I know that there's going to be no gap, okay? They're all going to be disks. None of them are going to be washers. And of course, from here, I know that my cylindrical cross sections are going to give me a radius that is dependent upon the function, okay? And therefore, it winds up being a very, very easy integral. This one goes 0 to 1, okay, because right here. Uh, 2 cube root of x plus 1. And if you're actually going to evaluate it and work it out, you're probably going to want to put that as x to the 1 third. You cannot forget the square. That is pi r squared h. The, the two things that are the most common mistakes in dealing with surface or revolution problems, one is being so worried about the integrand, you forget to put the pi out here. And by the way, when you're dealing with the AP exam, there actually is, on the free response section, one out of the nine points, uh, or, you know, or like one out of the three points for, being, for giving the correct integral on a particular portion of that problem, one of the three points will be remembering the pi, okay? Another of the points will be getting the integrand correctly. That means identifying r and remembering to square it. And then the third point will actually be evaluating it correctly. Okay, so setting up the integral is incredibly important in terms of not only just you know getting the correct answer and knowing showing people that you know what you're doing, but also come time for May in terms of actually getting all the points that you can possibly get when we actually get to. Uh, the uh, the AP exam, okay? Now that, of course, was disk. Let's actually do a washer one right now. Okay, let's look at the same, uh, let's look at the same thing. I'm not going to color code it this time, uh, but I will go ahead. Let's, let's do something, let's actually throw something else in here. Let's 
put in uh, y is equal to 1. Okay, and I really just want to be interested in, actually I'll color code the ones that I'm interested in dealing with. Let's deal with y is equal to 1, okay, and let's actually deal with the quadratic, okay. The quadratic, which is, of course, y is equal to x minus 1 squared. Now, what I want to do this time is I want to take the region bounded by those two functions and spin it around the x-axis, okay? Now this is going to be a little bit trickier because I'm dealing with two radii rather than a single radius and this is going to be washer. The only, the only, it's only going to be uh, a disk at the split second that x happens to be one, but anywhere else on this entire interval, which by the way is zero to two, right? The interval is implied for us by, by the intersection of these two functions. And I see the fact that if I start thinking about the cross sections of this particular of this particular region as they're going to be spinning around, I notice that I have a big R, and of course, like I said, I I would suggest every single time saying, okay, well, big R is what? Well, big R is always the same distance away from the axis of revolution. Okay, and like I said before, the radii are always going to be function minus axis or axis minus function. The function here is above the axis, so I'm going to subtract the axis from the function. y is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. And even though it's obnoxiously redundant, I'm going to go ahead because I want to get into the habit of writing r squared right here. Now what is small r? Well, small r is going to be is going to be the gap, the, the the radius of the gap, the radius of the inside of the washer, the empty space, right? And that is determined by this function right here. And that means that I have x minus 1 squared as that radius. Now, do you see how easy it is? to just plop r into the integrand instead of r squared, because in this case, r is already squared. And r squared is x minus 1 to the fourth. This is your legend. These are the ones that go into the integrand. And so I recognize pi, my limits of integration, as I stated before, are 0 to 2. And then it just needs to be big R squared minus small r squared dx, pi r squared minus r squared h. And that is the accumulation of the infinite number of washers, washer-like cross-sections of the volume that is actually going to... On the outside, this is just going to look like a cylinder, like a toilet roll, but the inside is actually going to look kind of cool because it's peak inside each end of the each end of it, and it's going to be sort of like a vortex, right? Um, so, I mean, you have, you know, something that looks like this, right? And, you know, each one of these, so you, but the outside is just going to look relatively, relatively straightforward, okay? It's going to be, because it's a constant, it's just going to be a straight cylinder. It's the inside that's going to look like little, of vortices on either end. Uh, and this right here is the just setting up of the integral, okay? Well, let's go ahead and do another one with that same scenario. Uh, that way we don't get distracted with new functions and stuff like that. We can just concentrate on, on actually what's going on here. Let's, let's do that same region, okay? But now I want to spin it around a different uh, I'm going to want to spin it around a different axis, okay? Okay, y is equal to x minus 1 squared. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to spin it around y is equal to 2. That is my axis of revolution. So we're still dealing with this same 
region right here, the one bound by the linear or the constant function and, and this quadratic, okay? But now, because the axis is up here instead of down here, small r is no longer, is no longer determined by this curve. As it spins out around, this is now the outside of that volume. The outside, or the big R, is now determined by the curve. The inside, or the small r, is determined by the constant function. Now remember, I said that the radii are always, are always function minus axis, or axis minus function. Okay, so the big R is determined by this curve, and it winds up being 2 minus, and it's 2 minus the curve because the, cur because the axis is above, right? And we want a distance that's positive, and if you want a distance that's positive, you subtract the smaller number from the larger number. Kind of makes sense, right? And so, oh gosh, that was written poorly. Why is the parenthesis right there? It's x minus 1 squared. I don't know what that parenthesis in the middle there is, uh, except for just a mistake. Okay, so that right there. Now you could simplify, but since we're just setting up, and I'm not actually going to go ahead and evaluate it, let's just go ahead and leave it in this ugly form right here. Okay, and of course the small r is just 1, and small r is just small r squared is just one. I would get into the habit every time it is washer doing this. Okay, so basically the radius right here is always going to be two minus this. Okay, and therefore when I set up the integral, it's still zero to two because it's the same region that we did in the last one. Uh, and of course, those limits of integration are implied by the points of intersection, which which are created by the uh, by those two functions. And big R winds up being two minus x minus one squared squared, and then small R is one, and then it's just dx. Okay. Um, I was hoping that the showing showing you the uh, Showing you the animations, yes, uh, on the, uh, actually it was yesterday that I made the video, but you don't know that. Um, showing you those animations was going to give you sort of an ability to see it a little bit better the moment that uh, we start doing this. Let's go ahead and let's do a little bit different one. Let's, um, do, 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 do. let's do this region right here. And let's artificially, I mean, they intersect here at zero, but let's artificially uh, limit it uh, to x is equal to two. So let's do this region between uh, the cube root function and the quadratic uh, from zero to two. And uh, let's go ahead and color code it like we have. Let's just, but we'll only color code the uh, functions that we're actually dealing with. This is y is equal to two, cube root of x plus one. And we'll use, I don't know, we'll use blue for the quadratic. Okay. Uh, y is equal to x minus 1 squared. Okay. And let's revolve it, uh, let's go ahead and revolve it around x, or y is equal to negative 1. Okay. So y is equal to negative 1 is down here, and we're going to revolve it around there. Now, first things first, we need to determine big R and small r. Now, the red function is, for, is farther away from the axis of revolution, and therefore it is going to determine our big R, but it is not with respect to the axis, and therefore big R is going to be function, because the function is actually above, right? minus the axis of revolution, okay? And of course, when we simplify, that just becomes uh, two cube root of x plus two, okay? And then of course, r squared becomes two cube root of, two, cube root of x, sorry, plus two squared. Small r is going to be 
x minus 1 squared minus a negative 1. Uh, you could simplify this uh, and we'll have it wind up being x squared minus 2x plus 2. That would be kind of probably a little bit easier. And r squared is x squared minus 2x plus 2 squared. Okay, since both of the functions are above the axis of revolution, my radii were function minus axis, whereas in the last scenario, they were axis minus function because the axis was more positive. The axis of revolution was above both of the functions that I was dealing with. Now, let's see if I can actually squeeze this in. 0 to 2, and then I just need r squared minus r squared, and I don't, have to, I don't have to guess at what they are. I've already got them written down as a nice keen reminder to myself. x squared minus 2x plus 2 squared, and then let's go ahead and squeeze in a dx right there. Ta-da! There you go, okay? That is a couple of examples uh, from just, you know, one different, one scenario of a bunch. Of, and we didn't do anything, we didn't do all the different possibilities. There are an infinite number of possibilities. Uh, with the next video, however, I would like to uh, use a different, uh, I would like to use a different set of functions that I've printed out. And we'll go ahead and play with those in the next video. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, uh, as always, please do email me. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you.